What's up, everyone? Good to see you. I'm back after a bit of a break. Had some stuff in real life to take care of. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to, you know, give a like half ass show and stuff. So I figured today was a good time to pick it back up. Um, and the deck we're looking at here is Red Green Initiative. Form is Legacy. This deck is pretty um, near and dear to my heart. Uh, around a year ago, I used a version of this deck to qualify for a Legacy Showcase Qualifier. I topped four out of a, I don't know, 200, 300 player field. I ran pretty well, as you, I mean, you always have to when you're looking to, to top eight these big, big events. And since then, there's been like one or two new printings that would be interesting for the deck. Um, in general, this deck is good because it asks questions fast. The best draws involve back-to-back -back threats. Um, we do have our eight initiative creatures and three Minskin Boo. That's like the, the meat and potatoes of the deck. The initiative mechanic is like a snowball that keeps going downhill. Um, to not get too far behind on board, we have Fury to catch up to protect the initiative. We have some prison elements in Chalice of the Void in Trinisphere, and not to mention Magus of the Moon, actually. Magus of the Moon is huge of this deck because Cavern of Souls on Human can power through Uncounterable Magus and Uncounterable um, Cage of Chaos Adventurer. Let's see if that's going to be relevant. The cool thing about playing the Red Green is we have access to eight on color Spirit Guides. So that means we have four Chromes, eight Spirit Guides, eight Soul Land. Uh, the spirit guides are better than, let's say, Lotus Petal um, because of cards like Null Rod or other taxing effects. Um, we have Fable of the Mirror Breaker as our, I don't know what to call this, like the the bread and butter card, the uh, just solid magic card, right? Sometimes it's a bit of uh, card filtering. Sometimes it's actually like if we get all the way to the third chapter and we get rid of summoning sickness, we can like start. Uh, copying Furies and, and initiative creatures and really do it to the opponent. And then we have a couple of Bombardiers. I didn't play these this uh, last time I played the deck. I played uh, Once Upon a Time. Bombardier can sometimes, you know, get back the initiative, can finish a game. Uh, it, can do some, it can do some cool things to run around with, you know, Chromox, Trinisphere, Chalices, Fury. You can even second main phase pitch to Fury, and then before the Evoke trigger, you can sacrifice it to Bombardier. So yeah, lots of cool cards. Um, sideboard addresses graveyards, uh, gnarly uh, artifacts, small creatures slash big creatures. Dead Gone is kind of cool. This can kill your Delver, but it can also bounce your Merc Tide or Merit Lage. And then the fourth Magus for when that effect is awesome, uh, mainly against like you know versus Saga strategies or. I don't know, five color control decks or something. I'm going to be taking this through some matches. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the deck tech. See you for the matches. All right, round one. We're on the draw here. Wow, this is actually an amazing artwork. Shoutless of the Void. Yeah, speaking of the Void, we, we need to throw this hand back into the Void. No mana sources. Not really anything to talk about there. This is going to be a... Keep, not a very impressive one, but it's going to be a keep. And I think I get rid of, boom, 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 maybe City of Traders. So keep, get rid of City, get ready to play turn one Fable, turn two Fable. Which, should, you know, is solid, but doesn't get the job done against Unfair. And get raised in the air by something like Delver. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. I didn't Google my opponent. Maybe I should have. Yeah, that's not the best for me. Okay. Maybe this is acceptable. Okay, we're even getting thoughts. Thought seized. That's annoying. So our deck doesn't care about uh, the graveyard, but our deck cares about my opponent having access to one of my cards via the Voidwalker. So definitely a solid start for the opponent. If they go take if they take the spirit guide, they can't go turn one fable. Um, but it's kind of a loose play, I would say. So, I'll go turn one Fable. My opponent can go Fable next turn. Bowmasters would be very, very annoying, because I actually want to trade in 
these cards, they're quite bad. Hmm. Yeah, th th this could I could be in trouble here. I'm gonna play second swamp. Okay, so the opponent does not want to go. Um. Uh, yeah, there's the bowmaster. So good. The opponent didn't want to go uh, their own fable, which is fine. I draw under mountain adventurer. I don't think I'm supposed to grow the Org 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 army. So, am I am I even racing my opponent here? That's the question. Mm, I'm not I'm not convinced I have a choice but to try and race my opponent. I think if I stay back here, I just get hit by a shadow, and it's kind of bad. Let's see what the opponent thinks about this attack. I'm fine either way. When it takes the damage. I'll play Adventurer. Yeah, it, it, it's very awkward once the opponent kind of gets on board. Um, I mean, a Shadow Creature that's amazing against, uh, against the initiative. So definitely, definitely tough. My opponent even has a double chump block. Yeah, maybe I'm just losing this race. Tough to say. Thoughtseize. That's gonna break. My opponent knew about two of the cards, so the unknown was the cavern. The opponent attacks with Voidwalker. I'm at nine. They go fetch a basic. Then I attack with both. Hmm. I have to say, I don't think I had any choice, like slow rolling the uh, adventurer was just bad, so we can just play it out, see what happens. The opponent fetches their third lane here, which, which could help. I'm kind of sad about that. I need to draw... Wow, murderous cut. Yeah, that's atrocious for me. I need to draw something like Fury. Fury would be the best draw on the deck. There's a Spirit Guide. Kind of funny. So let's attack with the Shaman. I expect to get double blocked here. Single block would also be cool. There's the single block. I'm going to play out Mountain, play Spirit Guide. Not exactly the thread I wanted there. <laughs> and now the opponent has the initiative. The opponent can grow the Voidwalker. And... But I think maybe if I draw Fury next turn, it's good enough. Let's see. Voidwalker grows to five. I get attack down to four. Then I draw Fury, kill my opponent's board. If I need to tap the tomb, then so be it. And I'm at two. Yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a shot here. Now even a card like Minskin Boo doesn't help. Because the Voidwalker is kind of out of reach. One and passes. I draw another ancient tomb, and I believe that's it. One has an unblockable. Yeah, can't do anything about that. Okay, that was tough. The murderer's cut was really, really strong. Fullmaster shutting down my um, ability to dig, and yeah, just all around tough game. The chalice is good against that deck. Tray ball is. Decent when I'm on the while I'm on the play. I like all of my threat. Uh, I cut Magus because my opponent's mono black most likely. Hmm. I 
I feel like I should bring in... Maybe I just bring in three ley lines and that's it. I think maybe that's fine. Maybe the macabres are better. Hmm. I'll try three ley lines. I think that's okay. Oh, I should have considered... Uh, I'll bring in some removal. I think that's better than... And having Trinisphere, like my opponent's not a combo deck, and if I if I don't have like turn one Trinisphere, the opponent might just you know easily play around it. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. The thing is, my opponent might not even be an Entomb deck, so maybe this Leyline is just bad. Oh, okay, I changed my mind again. I'll go for a couple of Macops for hedging against Leyline. Then I have all the three, like, shocks, basically. Let's see how that works. Hmm. So this is the keep, but I have to think about how to play it. I can go... I'm probably supposed to go turn one Bombardier. Because my opponent can, you know, thought seize me, reanimate me, do whatever. Also, if I get Bombardier in play, then my I have a Chrome Mox that I can... Fling if my opponent has, like, I don't know, Voidwalker or something. Keeping the Fury in hand is actually kind of scary if I'm up against the card Reanimate. Chrome. Pitch Fury. So let's see. Yeah, I can't do anything smart here. Let's exile the Spirit Guide. Turn one Bombardier. So in this spot, if I had a red card in hand, I, I, I would consider just pitching Fury to deal seven on second main. Get rid of my hand entirely, but yeah, I don't know. Opponents on a double mulligan. Let's see what they found. It doesn't take much to beat this uh, draw, to be honest. Yeah, Fatal Push is a good one. I draw another Bombardier, so... Hmm. Let's look at the creature types once more. Or... So it's either Giant or Human, so I'll name Giant here because I have red mana. From my other sources. I'm not uh I'm not too confident here. It's it's like I I basically built my own double mulligan with the spirit guides and the, the chrome box. So now we're fighting on equal terms. The dream is the opponent plays like Voidwalker, I draw a Soul Land, Hardcast Fury. But uh that's the dream as I said. Reality could be a lot different. Here's a Surveil land. It's always tough to say if the green is relevant. Oh, Stalker. Just 1-1 one, one Stalker? Because the opponent kept a good card on top, I guess. Let's Chalice for 1. Hope the opponent kept a 1-drop on top. Menace Creature versus Menace Creature. Because I think the Stalker even grows if you descend from the top of your library into the graveyard. Let's uh, make sure the opponent has a bunch of 1-drops in hand. Here's another Surveil. Yeah, last time they kept the card on top. They didn't grow the stalker. Let's see. Shelter's Edict. Very annoying right now. The opponent grows. I draw an uncastable. Tough game, tough game. Unfortunately, the Stalker got in before the Chalice. He's a Voidwalker. So if my opponent can't 
Oh, is this from, let's see, if a permanent from anywhere. Perfect. So playing this into the chalice grows the stalker. I like that a lot. I was about to get excited about uh, Fury killing both of my opponent's creatures, but not this time. That is a good draw. Not going to lie. I'll cast Fury. Hmm. Killing Stalker or Voidwalker? Hmm. I'll try, I'll try and kill the Stalker here, mainly because this Fury is handily racing my opponent, and Stalker can actually block. But I don't know about that, if that's good logic or not. Also, this card can, if it gets to a 4-4, four -four, trades with Fury. So yeah, definitely like that. This is, looks like Murder's Cut to me. Mm, we're getting we're getting destroyed by some questionable cards here. Maybe I'm playing questionable cards. That, that could be. It's sad to have five mana but no green. I'm not out of the, I'm not out of this game yet, but it's very hard. Like my opponents found a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, here's the wrong the wrong spirit guide. I would happily just draw like the other spirit guide, get in there with the hamster, but yeah, it's looking bad for the home team. Here's the bowmaster. I get shot down to ten. The good thing is those orcs aren't getting anywhere, but the shadow creature is so. Very, very tough, tough start to the, to the games today. My deck showing, you know, just stompy things like run out of gas, can't cast your cards, kill your own mana base, flooding is bad, and you know, we get grief. I like that play from the opponent. The, from my opponent's point of view, it's like, what can possibly be in my opponent's hand? And the answer to that question is a green uncastable. So, great play by the opponent. <laughs> Here's the Wooded Foothills. Yeah, that Wooded Foothills would have uh, changed the game for sure. Uh, earlier, that is. But sometimes when you play these kind of decks, you don't really have, you know, margin for error. Meaning, if you have, like, uncastable in hand or... Because this deck is is working with like less resources than let's say any ponder or brainstorm deck, so you can't really sculpt your way into you know like a service like your sketchy opener can't evolve into like a good mix of land spells, stable mana on turn let's say three and four like normal cantrip decks. You kind of need your draw step to really work to your benefit. So there's a lot of variance, but at the same time you also have lands to tap for. Um, for two mana, we have the ability to play turn one Minskin Boo that, that the other decks don't. So, I mean, you need, you need to embrace the variance if you, uh, if you register a deck like Red Green Initiative. I remember when I, when I played the deck um, in, the, in the Showcase Challenge one year ago, I kept, you know, having uh, turn one, great play. Oh, the opponent didn't have a force. I stole that game. Then another game in the match, I had like, Big, big thing, get forced. Oh, draw the clutch, uh, whatever, next threat to do it all over, and that card sticks. Um, so, I mean, you, you, need, you need to run hot. Meanwhile, my own Fury gets rid of my Spirit Guide. My opponent attacks me down to five, and I need to draw Fury myself. And I don't. All right, GG's. Oof, very demoralizing here. Uh, getting flooded both games. But to be fair, the Fable would have fixed it if it wasn't for Bowmaster, and Bowmaster wasn't around um, back when I played the deck last, so yeah, that's definitely something new to keep an eye out for. Um, Alright, we got smoked here by what looked to be Mono Black. Yeah, I don't even know what to call this deck, but I mean, mon Mono Black's a little bit of an aggressive um, strategy, a little bit of incidental graveyard hate. Just like solid cards, not all in on any reanimation. Looked like looked like a cool deck. All right, see you guys for the next match. All right, let's try again. I'm playing Red Green Initiative.
and I won the die roll. Looks like this hand is almost good. No, but but to be fair, I think it's okay to make our first play turn two. The question is which land I'm playing out turn one. I mean, what if I get my taiga wasted? How sad am I? And how sad am I if I get my ancient tomb wasted? Maybe less sad? Hmm. I think I've convinced myself to play ancient tomb turn one. Which, if my opponent has a wasteland, it's very likely to get wastelanded, but I think I recover better from that situation. No turn one play here because of the color of the spirit guide. Here's a cavern. So it could be up against goblins. Goblins must be a kind of a terrible matchup. Maybe I didn't tweak my sideboard enough for, for that deck. Something like Pyrokinesis, stuff like that. Wizard. I don't play. Okay. That seems fine. Fairy Seer. Okay. So it looks like we might be fighting over the initiative, but I still think that's my best play. There's a cavern. Should probably go for that. So I go giant. Exile. Wait, wait. Like this. Uncounterable giant. I go fetch a mountain. But I, I am facing a flyer, so... This might be a problem with the initiative. Eh, let's see. let's see. Mountain. Also worth noting, Undermountain Adventure is a mana creature, which is not, you know, irrelevant. You can go, like, attack, then second main. You can use it as mana creature if it's not relevant as a blocker. It's just, like, it, it's nothing major. It's just good flexibility, I would say. Also, I just remembered, Fourth the Alingas was in the card when I played this color combination before, so maybe maybe this is just like a worse version of Boros. The opponent takes the initiative. The opponent can search for a basic, but they already played a land. A small small uh, sequence you wanna you wanna attack, get the get the land and play it to give away less info. Um Sure. Huh, so actually I just noticed, I think I made a mistake. But I can correct it. I was supposed to play... No, maybe not. I don't want to get forced. I, I was trying to think about my land drop last turn, and how... Um, I... want to double spell this turn. But I think the, the Magus can help me in that regard. So take the initiative, I will choose to grow my adventurer. I don't get dismembered, that's good. I guess I would have gotten dismembered before damage, so there's that. Um, so let's see here. If I go... Um, can I... Fetch. No, I can't fetch a forest before doing this. So I go Taiga, two damage, and like this. I go Magus. Then I tap my adventure and my cavern to go Fable if, if Magus resolves. Might get dazed here, it is what it is. I had to do it this, this order because I needed Magus to turn my cavern into a red source for Fable. Kind of awkward, because I want to resolve Fable more than I want to resolve Magus. I resolved both. Let's see what our opponent has here end of turn. 
Spell Starter Sprite makes a lot of sense. Fortunately for my opponent, I didn't play I didn't play a one or two drop. It's kind of scary my opponent's attacking in the air. <clears throat> so worth noting my opponent's cavern is also a red source now. Shouldn't matter too much though. My opponent even has um the second island from the first initiative trigger last turn. My opponent goes for the scry, which I'm actually kind of happy about when it comes to the race. Here's second island, here's a vial, which is gonna be pretty slow this game. I draw land, but now we get to filter with our good friend Fable. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be a problem for the opponent. Um, Spell Stutter Sprite for three is a thing. Mm, let's attack with everything. Take it from there. If my opponent blocks, I can play... Hmm. I feel like I should just play um, the Adventurer, but let's see. The Bombardier I should have played first main phase if I wanted any value out of it, but then again, second spell stutter would be annoying. This is kind of, this is kind of a good way, I think, to win the game. I trap my opponent down to eight life. And I play, yeah, I can even play both here. I can start with the adventurer. I think that's just fine. Play land. Play adventurer. Try to draw a card. It works. Draw. Another one. That's funny. Um, do we want to get dazed on the bombardier? That's the question. I think it's acceptable. I didn't get dazed, and now I don't have the imagination to think about how the opponent will beat me. This is a big, chunky board. All right, so... We, fairies, like, we can't really say more than that. So I have these three. I don't care in particular about the Magus. Um, Chalice of the Void might not be very good. Trinisphere might, might, might not be very good, but I don't know what to do about that. It's like, the sideboard is always the, the spicy subject when it comes to Stompy decks, because you can't, in my opinion, you can't cover, like, everything from... Maybe you can cover, like, the top five decks, but once you start going into, oh, then there's this niche strategy here and the strategy there obviously my opponent's deck is beyond niche but it's very hard to cover everything there is the case that a card like tray ball on the draw is just horrible and i would rather have magus because it's a red card and sometimes just a tutu maybe that's better i could even see myself just cutting chalice as well yeah i'll I'll try this. Am I supposed to have bigger? Hmm. I'll try with a couple of vigors. I couldn't tell you, like, my opponent has vile, maybe more, but I just don't like the those cards on the draw. Huh. I'm I was about to say this hand is close, but it's really not. Like if I was just one mana source off from playing like Adventurer, maybe because of the back of Fury, but let's put that back. Mm, okay, yeah, this is super tough. So, what can I do here? If I put back a removal spell, I need to draw. Yeah, I mean, I think I keep this hand, put back a removal spell, and then I just lose to a Force of Will, more or less. This hand can go turn one fable. Chrome mox. I don't even know if that was a good draw. Let's see. 
Chrome Mox imprint what? Removal spell? Probably. Chrome Mox imprint spirit guide? Yes. Oh, uh, I messed up. Oh, I didn't. I'm, I'm fine. I don't even know about this. So the table resolves. So my plan is basically here to draw mana source, attack with the shaman, play Minskin Boo, and like the one-two punch. Ah, I think my opponent's on some kind of I, I can't remember thought lash, thought something. Like a like a combo deck with a injected, I guess, fairy package. That is not. Um. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I feel like I just get rid of the fury to draw one. I don't draw the mana source, which is sad. Yeah, my opponent must be some some kind of uh, some kind of combo deck. I I mean, I could be in trouble here, despite having turn one, turn one fable and and the the goblin surviving. I have a couple of four drops in hand that are, you know, more and more likely to get dazed by the minute. Here's Riptide Lab, a cool older card, and Snaring Bridge. So now I look like a genius for bringing in a couple of Vigors, I guess. Uh, wow, this sucks. Um, okay. So I hope I don't get dazed here. Here, I wonder what I'm supposed to do. I think it's Minskin Boo. Or get the initiative going. I'll try and get the initiative going. Let's play. Adventurer resolves and attack, though. Go for a forest to go with my red moxen. So the cool thing about ensnaring bridge and me playing initiative is if I can keep, you know, copying initiative creatures, I can kind of speed run my way through the dungeon and win with um trap. But 20 life is a bit much, I would say. Uh, I can't remember this. This is like a bounce spell. Okay. This is beatable. Um, let's forge. Don't think that matters too much. Only have three lands. There is a bombardier, which can attack. If I do that, I can fling something to kill. I don't think that's how you play this. Um, so let's see here. Hmm. I think I'm just going to pass. Super annoying. Also, the Bombardier is a way to... She's uh, through damage. Ah, these situations are so tough. I'm not the best with, like, situations I haven't seen before. So, let's try and think. If I can get a Bombardier attack in, I can fling for a bunch of damage. That, I mean, that it all counts. I'll make a copy of the adventure. I'll dome my opponent. Upkeep, I'll draw an extra card. So as long as we have this standstill, I'm 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 winning, right? Here's archive. I draw a card. Chrome Mox, Force of Vigor. Force of Vigor. Not bad, not bad. Mm. 
So I can go Chrome, Pitch Chaos, Play Bombardier, Copy Bombardier. Let's see how the opponent responds here. They can empty. Hmm. So I attack here. Is that just lethal? I have, no, I think I can put my opponent to one. So I go. Swing that, take six, take seven, eight, I can put my opponent to one. That is decent. Question is if I want to do that. Maybe it's the same if I put my opponent to, uh, I want to say five? And I sacrifice a mox because five is like the magic number when it comes to trap. Yeah, I don't think putting my opponent to one does anything meaningful here. So let's put our opponent to five. I will wait on the vigor here. Good upkeep, kill the bridge, but I, something might come up. Let's see. Step through. I'm I'm scared now. Opponent goes for an oracle. One more oraculo. Let's see. So oracle two unknowns. Here's paradigm shift. Exile all cards. So I just lose now, right? Let's see. If I have Vigor in response, my opponent has three cards in the yard, then play Oracle with Devotion 4. Yeah, that's just game. Ooh, Paradigm Shift. I forgot about that. I thought that was like some four-man enchantment. Um, but I guess there's, there's more. Paradigm Shift. Hmm. With Aether Vial and stuff like that. I'm I'm even trying to I'm trying to wonder here. But that must be like it must be like a cantrip deck. Chalice must be good on the play. I can't imagine otherwise. Do I want another vigor or is it you know beatable? I can do it like this. Okay. Getting crushed here. So the opponent's a combo deck. We're on the play, we're looking at this hand. This hand is turn one bombardier, nothing. I can't I can't keep this. This is just just a mulligan. Can't keep this either. Only one spirit guide is a mana source. I feel like I can't I can't mulligan this. I can go turn one chalice of the void for one. So I want to imprint Minsk and Boo, I think. Put back. Yeah, this is terrible. This is uh This is not gonna end well. Chromox pitch Minsk and Boo, mainly because it's two colors. Pitch Spirit Guide. My opponent's licking their chops over there over there. <laughs> this is just Atrocious. Chalice of the Void for one. Might not do anything against my opponent's deck if they just have the the card from last game. And I'm so far away. Like, in a perfect world, I can draw, like, normal mana source into Soul Land. But realistically, we're looking at a long game. My opponent forced it and plays a vial. I guess that's decent for me. 
another adventure. My opponent needs some terrible draw steps for me to have a chance. Okay, so the opponent didn't have more lands, but that's fine because of the vial and the time I'm giving them here. Vial is up to two. I got kind of confused about the whole fairy packet from game one. Seems like the other cards in the deck are cool. They actually have a plan. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. This will be a fast one at the office. Here is Thassa's Oracle. Vial up to three. Opponent finds the second land. No attack. Tavern. Name Giant. I'm one mana source off from starting to cast uncounterable initiative creatures. Here's a the redrop getting violet. Oh, I love this. This card is beautiful. Patron Wizard. Three blue. By the way, it looks like a actual person. It's kind of weird. Three blue. Two two. Tap it on top wizard you control. Counter target spell and it's control place one. Like I remember this card back in when I started playing Magic. Wizard was kind of a deck in standard. And this card just seemed unbeatable for me. Like it just seems so good to have, but how you, the, the the opponent can can just never do anything. I thought this card was broken. Obviously, here it's it's doing the job. Paradigm shift. The opponent's down to two cards in the deck, and I draw the fourth fourth initiative creature. So not a not a very contested game here from the opponent. This makes the no attack, by the way, make a lot of sense. I, there's no way I, I would guess. Oh, it's because my opponent's running Patron Wizard. All right, good games. I didn't put up much of a fight, but uh, yeah, the opponent's deck seemed cool. This was a great blast from the past. Um, I really enjoyed that. I'm not big into like the fairy package, but I guess it's kind of cool that they're also wizards. So yeah, a lot of synergies overall. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get the win in the last one, shall we? All right, let's see if third time's the charm. I'm looking to find a mesh win with my red-green initiative deck. That's not how I rem remember the deck for sure. You're like just drawing either a ton of mana sources or a ton of four drops and doing nothing. The hand is obviously insane. Um, the only thing that would have been better was being on the play, but <laughs> um, let's say if we live, at least we can make a better decision on our turn. Looks like we're getting reanimated turn one here. We're not. Looks like we're getting reanimated two. Uh, yeah, I feel like my opponent's going to take the Chalice of the Void that I would have played for two, and uh, then from there it's easy for the opponent to win. Uh, if they had reanimate, they would have gone for Gristlebrand. But they thought he's instead, so I think my opponent's on two-drop reanimation. Let's see. Magus of the Moon's just... Chromox Fodder here, really, really a bad card against the card Basic Swamp. We do have some good cards in the sideboard to help with this matchup. Four Ley Lines and a couple of Macabs. Fast Reanimator. It's, 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 uh, I remember at some point this deck was like 15, 20% of the metagame. Um, wow, even on Mask. What? Okay, so the opponent did not have a reanimation spell, I guess? Or they're missing the land? One of those? Oof. Would you take the chalice here and make me look like a fool with these non-impactful cards? I was about to say, this deck was like so huge in the metagame at some point. But, uh... 
once the opponents also started running reanimates and stuff, but with blue cards, then it can be can be a problem. Um, so let's see. I want to go imprint Magus. Play that. Play Magus. Is that correct? I think it is. Because then, thanks to these two spirit guys, I can play whatever haymaker I draw. Might not matter if we just get, uh, you know, ex uh, what's it called? Like, anime dead, exhume, whatever. That isn't the case, so let's see. Do draw an initiative creature, I can go get to my forest. So basically, I have to beat my opponent before they find a reanimation spell. Not an easy ask, but I'll try. My clock is decent here. Put my opponent to 16 now. Next turn, grow. Attack for 7. Put my opponent to 9. So yeah, I mean... It's, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. I don't like my opponent drawing Faithless Looting. Let's forge up the Adventurer. I draw Fury. Okay. That's not the worst draw. So let's see. I, I, can't, I can't slow roll the Fury. That's just too much. Let's play it. Not deal any damage. And my opponent now needs to... Yeah, randomly made a big creature. It's unfortunately no reanimate. So this was the reason to put counters on Adventurer, so that I didn't care about the Magus if I was facing a sacrifice effect. Um, so let's see here. Now it's Trap. Trap my opponent. Seven is not a good life total here. Let's see. Okay. So, funnily enough, I can attack with both. Sure, because of anime dead, it's minus one power, which is kind of funny. My opponent goes to one. Those guys square off. Play this, draw a card. Probably just play it, name, I don't know, human. Pass the turn, and my opponent needs to reanimate once more. Or it's going to be very sad for the opponent. So let's see, which card am I sacrificing? I feel like if my opponent is playing a gristle brain, I'm just dead, so... Don't want to take the Trampler in case my opponent has something like, I don't know, Bowmasters or something. Mm, okay, I'll sacrifice the Adventurer. Take the damage. The opponent takes the initiative, which is <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah, I feel like if my opponent can reanimate Drizzlebrand, I'm losing. It has to be one of the seven remaining anime dead or exhume. And even exhume would be bad, I feel like. Yeah. Sometimes it's not your day. That's just that's just how magic is sometimes. That's okay. So here the thing is if my opponent blocks Fury, my opponent goes to ten, this deals five. Oh, uh, let's see, is there any chance? Let's attack. I hit a spirit guide. Not exactly what I wanted to see. Opponent blocks the fury. They stabilize. And it's over. Okay. So we lost. It's funny to say I lost a close one to reanimator. It's not always you can say that. Um, so I definitely want those cards. I think furies are bad. And then a couple of magus. And then we 
Hope to have either Leyline, Macabre, Trinisphere, or Chalice in our opener. I think that's a pretty big number. I'm I'm confident with that with that number. But the thing is, you have to beat that deck um, on the draw for game three. I think that's the biggest problem on the play. A lot of cards are live. We have the best one here in Leyline. I can go um, turn one Fable Leyline. I think what I'm supposed to do is imprint spirit, uh, red spirit guide to chrome mox, play city, play, yeah, for sure. Let's see if the opponent likes their opener. Mm, last game was so brutal. My opponent needed to animate deads. The, the exhumes would have been way worse because I would get back an initiative, initiative creature each time. But yeah, the animate deads were awesome. So let's see what else can we do with this hand. We have Spirit Guide on the Chrome, City of Traders, Play Fable, Ley Lines in Play. Then we check our draw step and see how frisky we get. I can imagine that at least I want to cycle the Spirit Guide on turn two uh, to Fable. But since I don't have green mana, I might want to hang on to the Spirit Guide, of uh, the Elvish Spirit Guide. Let's see what the opponent can do about a Leyline. The thing about Leyline, the counterplay from Reanimator is usually either show and tell, or since I'm playing initiative, it's kind of scary. I could have had like a big initiative feature in hand. I can easily lose to that, that like get griefed, get reanimated, and then I lose despite I have a Leyline in play. Like that's very, very realistic. So it looks like my opponent's hoping for that plan to come to fruition. On mask picking the green spirit guide out of the equation. Pedal. Nothing. I draw Bombardier. I think I'm happy enough with that card. Ray Ball. Hmm. I'm still going to go Bombardier. I think that card is. I think slamming the door here is can can be important, and my opponent's counterplay for Leyline, which is either like kill it now with wear tear, um, play third land show and tell. Trinisphere doesn't really disrupt that. Trinisphere is awesome if I see my opponent's like missing a land drop or something, but I think for now it's 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 a too big of a gamble. So I should have considered there to sacrifice a treasure token, but I think it's too early. Is this a grief? I guess I wouldn't mind that at all. My opponent plays out pedal, heads up play against, you know, the threat of Trinisphere in my deck. My opponent passes. I draw an initiative creature, which is an extremely good draw. So let's see. Let's attack four. Then I can play Undermount Adventurer. Go get a land. Kill my opponent next turn. Forest. I don't know. I'll play the forest. Um, am I flinging anything now? That is the question. I can put my opponent, if I fling the adventure, my opponent's at six. I don't necessarily think that's a good idea. Hmm. Maybe I can fling the treasure with no problem. Let's do that. Opponent had ten life. They need some good stuff. 
kind of hard to come up with. Like show and tell big creature. But I think that even I even beat that with um copying the bot let's say my opponent goes show and tell gristlebrand. Then I feel like I'm beating that with um reflection on the bombardier, like menace, damage, flinging, etc. I accidentally boarded out a fable. Oh. I didn't notice that, but I, I meant to sideboard out Magus for somewhat obvious reasons. Greenish Brown on the draw is not the best. Chalice on the draw is the same, but that's just how it is with this deck. Like, on the play, it's supposed to do its thing. On the draw, you kind of have to hope things doesn't get out of hand turn one. All of that jazz. Um, so basically, the, if my opponent keeps seven, I need a black card in my opening hand. Which is a lot of pressure. Opponent's on the mulligan. I don't even know if that changes anything. So I can go turn one initiative or turn one chalice. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan for a black card. Here's a ley line, so that's a keep. I don't I don't care what <laughs> these other cards are, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep the ley line. And actually here, I'm gonna go big brain and uh bottom this adventurer because I don't want to lose to, like, with the ley line in play to the, the scenario I described last game. I'll keep, put that card to the bottom, done, begin with that card in play. The initiative creatures are supposed to, you know, come off the top so I can play them. I'm curious to see how much my opponent respects the ley line. Well, what I mean by that is, yeah, and now I just look like a genius because I got rid of the initiative creature. Um, I'm curious how much they respect it. Like, are they willing to board in, like, bad creatures that aren't, you know, broken creatures in order to combat the ley line? Or do they lean on this discard plan? That's a That's a good draw. So... I don't play anything, I guess. Let's just play the Taiga. Pass the turn. So if I draw a colored card, I have um, Adventure. So let's see. Chrome. Pitch Fable. Land. Play Adventurer. I guess I should have found Forest technically. In case this gets discarded, I would rather have the other mix of mana. Realistically, it's not gonna ha it's not gonna matter. So I think yeah, this is a, this is an important takeaway. Lay down of the Void is insane against Reanimator, but they have four Mask for Grief, X amount of Thoughtsies. And if they get to discard an initiative creature, they can just reanimate that and laugh all the way to the bank at that ley line. So that's definitely something that you have to keep an eye out for. Ley line isn't just GG's. There's like multiple ways to beat it. The good news is the re the reanimator deck is going to keep any hand that can like produce a fatty relatively quickly. So there will be a chunk of games where the ley line is enough, right? But the, the counterplay, it's, it's important to think about. Hmm, so let's see. I think I'm just going to go as fast as possible. Chalice was a good draw. So let's attack here. Let's see what we flip off the top before deciding. Bad Chrome Mox is bad. Um, hmm. Chalice for one or Chalice for two? I'll go Chalice for one, mainly because Wear Tear is like the only one-for-one one removal I can think about for Leyline. And the game is going to be over very soon. Which, <laughs> yeah, literally. So let's see how much damage is this. Five to the dome, that's down to eight. Then I attack them down to one and get a few looks. Yeah, th th this was... Uh... This was kind of a cool game because I mulligan like 
a decent hand, but it's not decent in the context of getting, you know, reanimated quickly, right? So I find my Leyline, that's cool. I bought him a card that is not close to the worst card in my hand, but because of the dynamic of unmask slash grief slash slash dotsies plus reanimation, that card would just wreck me, right? So instead, I put it to the bottom. My opponent kind of bricked on the discard spell. Looked like they had a very all-in hand that couldn't beat a ley line aside from that plan. Uh, they, they might as well lose the game here with like reanimate in hand. That's very, very possible, right? And then I kind of trust my deck to, to, to let me draw like Bombardier, Fable, Initiative Creature, Minsk and Boo, a couple of Spirit Guys like before my opponent recovers. So, yeah. Oh, sneeze incoming. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. So, just some, some cool dynamics here and there. Not anything mind blowing, but it's just worth, worth taking note of. The other matches, my deck just didn't do anything. I mean, bunch of lands in the first one, bunch of spells in the second one. And uh, yeah, that's just how it is sometimes with Stompy decks. I mean, it, it was cool to revisit this deck. I'm happy I drew better one year from, from one year ago. Today, I, I couldn't definitely couldn't win a tournament with, with these draws. Um, maybe I could have played a little bit better. Maybe I could have constructed my sideboard a little bit better. But yeah, I, I don't really recommend this deck right now. Also with, you know, the other decks got better. This deck really didn't really get better. Like Bombardier, sure, but Mono Red Prison also has that. Goblins also has that. So, yeah, Red Green Initiative. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna revisit you anytime soon. But uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. I enjoyed playing, winning or losing. I don't care too much. It's uh, mainly to you know get better, showcase cool cards, and uh, yeah, take you uh, on my journey here on my channel. Thanks so much for that. I'll see you next time.